This year, Oscar will have its 96th ceremony. It is the main event of the award season and still the most prestigious prize for the film industry. But what it was like in the past? Let's go back to 1929, to the first ceremony and see who participated, who won. It is the only Academy Awards ceremony that wasn't broadcast on either radio or television. But let's piece it together from the information we have and imagine how it would look like. The day is May 16th and around 250 people mostly Academy members, gather for the dinner party at the Blossom Room of the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. This is where the award would be presented. The host for the night will be the famous actor Douglas Fairbanks, Hollywood's first major action hero. He, by the way, was also the first president of the Academy. Everyone gathers, but there is no nervous anticipation because the winners were already announced months before the ceremony. Also, it was just an Academy Award. The nickname Oscar wasn't yet invented. In 1929, the sound had just been introduced into film. So all the movies at the ceremony were silent films from 1927 and 1928. One of the first talkies, the jazz singer, was not allowed to compete for Best Picture because the Academy decided it was unfair to let movies with sound compete with silent films. So let's start the ceremony. Our reconstruction will be a bit longer than the real thing, since the real ceremony took only 15 minutes. And the first category is Best Engineering Effects. This is how visual effects were called. So the nominees are Ralph Hammeras for no specific film, but probably these two titles were considered. Roy Pomeroy for Wings and Nugent Slaughter for no specific film, but he worked on first partially sound film, Jazz Singer. And the winner? is Roy Pomeroy for Wings, a well-deserved win for portraying aerial battles that still look magnificent. Next category is now an extinct one, Best Writing, Title Writing, meaning it is a nomination for the text in the intertitles. The nominees are Gerald Duffy. It was a posthumous nomination for The Private Life of Helen of Troy. The film only partially survived. Joseph Farnham for No Specific Film and George Marion Jr. for No Specific Film. And the winner is Joseph Farnham for his films, most notably Red Mill and his work on Legendary Greed back in 1924. Best Art Direction nominees are William Cameron Menzies for two films The Dove and Tempest, Harry Oliver for Seventh Heaven, and Rokas Gliza for Sunrise. The winner is William Cameron Menzies. Unfortunately, The Dove didn't survive, but we can see his work in The Tempest, in these shots where the whole miniature city transforms into the real one. Best Cinematography has only two contestants. George Barnes for several films, but only one partially survived, Sadie Thompson, and Charles Rosher and Carl Struss for Sunrise. Winner is Charles Rosher and Carl Struss for the groundbreaking cinematography in Sunrise, and especially the amazing tracking shots.
Best Writing and Original Story. Nominees The Circus, written by Charles Chaplin. Underworld, Ben Hecht. And The Last Command, Lajos Biro. And the winner is Ben Hecht for Underworld. This film is the first gangster film, even before Scarface and Little Caesar. For the adaptation category nominees are Anthony Coldaway for Glorious Betsy, Alfred Cohn for The Jazz Singer, and Benjamin Glazer for Seventh Heaven. And Benjamin Glazer wins for a great story full of different themes, social inequality, domestic violence, and romance. Now for the most interesting categories. For the Best Actress nominee are one of the stars of Silent Era Gloria Swanson for Sadie Thompson. Louise Dresser for A Ship Comes In, and Janet Gaynor for three films, Seventh Heaven, Street Angel, and Sunrise. And the winner is Janet Gaynor. It is the only time the award was granted for multiple roles. Gaynor was not only the first actress to win the award, but at 22, was the youngest until 1986. She was able to make a successful transition to sound films and during the early 1930s, was one of the most popular actresses and one of Hollywood's biggest box office draws. 
Janet possessed the perfect combination of humor, charm, vulnerability, and innocence. Her most famous role was an aspiring actress, Esther, in A Star is Born. And at the finish, the kid turns around and sings the lullaby to its mother. Uh, pardon it, big boys, but would you like a little hors uh, They say they're the best in town. Don't tell me. I know, Mae West. That's a great twist. But where are you going to find a two-month-old baby that can sing? Soon after, she decided to retire at the top of her career at 33. Later, Janet explained, I had been working steadily for 17 long years. Making movies was really all I knew of life. I just wanted to have time to know other things. And she did. She became an accomplished oil painter of still lifes and sold over 200 paintings. She also performed on Broadway and on television. Ladies and gentlemen, when something like this happens to you and you try to tell how you feel about it, you find that out of all the words in the world, there are only two that really mean anything. Thank you. Next category, Best Actor. Charles Chaplin for the role in The Circus. Emil Jannings for The Last Command in the Way of All Flesh. and Richard Barthelmus for The Noose and the Patent Leather Kid. And the winner is a Swiss-born German actor, Emil Jannings. He was very popular in the 1920s, first in Germany and then in Hollywood. His career in America came to an end with the advent of talkies, as his thick German accent was difficult to understand. His dialogue was initially dubbed by another actor in the part talkie The Patriot, although Jannings' own voice was restored after he objected. After Jannings returned to Europe, he starred opposite Marlene Dietrich in the 1930 film The Blue Angel, his last successful film. Dear Miss Lola, will you permit me to offer this to And may I also ask you 
to be my wife. Wife? Yeah. <laughs> After the Nazi seizure of power in 1933, Jannings continued his career in the service of Nazi cinema. In Nazi Germany, he starred in several films that were intended to promote Nazism. Best Directing in the Comedy Picture, one and only time when award for directing was divided into comedy and drama. So, for directing comedy nominees are Charles Chaplin for The Circus, Lewis Milestone for Two Arabian Nights, and Ted Wilde for Speedy. And the winner is Lewis Milestone for Two Arabian Nights. It might look like a surprise win, because the film competed with Chaplin and Harold Lloyd who played in the Speedy. But the film is full of funny gags and deserves a victory. Next category for Best Directing in Dramatic Picture and nominees are Herbert Brennan for Sorrel and Son, Film only partially survived. King Vidor for the crowd. Frank Borzage for Seventh Heaven. And the winner is Frank Borzage for his film Seventh Heaven. Although the crowd might have been a fairer winner, but Academy thought its story is a bit too dark and depressing. And the last two awards are also divided for what today we would call most successful film, blockbuster, and for artistic indie film. So, category best unique and artistic picture first. Nominees are Sunrise,
Chong documentary film about a poor farmer in northern Nan province, northern Thailand. And the crowd. And the winner is Sunrise, a song of two humans created by newly arrived German director F.W. Murnau. Sunrise isn't a crime drama. It isn't even a classic romance. It's a film about the rekindling of true love. And the last category, Outstanding Picture. And nominees are The Racket, Wings, and Seventh Heaven. And the winner is Wings, directed by William Wellman. The movie told the story of two World War I pilots who fall for the same woman. Director himself and several actors were pilots during the war. It was the most expensive movie, with a budget of $2 million and the most successful in 1927. Wings also has a magnificent cinematography and technical effects, but most importantly, it shows all the horrors of war. And lastly, although Chaplin was originally a nominee for Best Actor, Best Writer, and Best Comedy Director for The Circus, he was removed from these categories, a change that some attributed to his unpopularity among Hollywood elite. Instead, he received a special honorary award with title for acting, directing, and producing film The Circus. And this is the end of our ceremony. Thanks for watching.